Hello and welcome to Pep Talk with me, Mr. Pepperell. In this episode, we're going to continue our introduction to nuclear radiation and think about some of the sources of radioactivity in our environment. So, by the end of this video, you should be able to tell me where does background radiation come from. So, this is a Geiger counter used in scientific research and industry, and what it does is emits a distinctive click whenever it's put near a radioactive source. So, radioactive particles from the source are detected and the counter here gives that a little click so what you'll hear is click 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 the more clicks you hear the more particles are being detected but what you might also notice is that a click is also given out even when there's no source nearby because of something called background radiation okay and this radiation can be from a number of sources both natural and man-made so where is background radiation? Well, the answer is it's everywhere in the background. OK, so I thought I'd have a little look in my room here, see if there's any background radiation about. So what I'm going to do is I've set up my um, equipment that we just talked about. I've got my Geiger Muller tube here, which is detecting radioactive particles. And I've got this little counter here. It's counting up the number of particles it detects. I've turned off the ticking because it was a bit too loud for the video. OK, but already you can see that this number is starting to go up. It's starting to pick up background radiation, radioactive particles that are just here in the room. Now I'm interested in the count rate, which is how many radioactive particles is it going to get in a minute. So I've got my stopwatch here, I'm just going to reset this back to naught with the naught button, I'm going to start my stopwatch and we'll see just how many radioactive particles it picks up, okay? And we'll come back and have a little look at that in a minute. So we're just coming up to my, uh, you can see on there, just up to a minute now, okay? And you can see that my counter has ticked up quite a long way. It's up on 17 there. Uh, we're on 54 seconds, 55, 56. It's up on 17 still, 58, 59. And in a minute, I counted 17 radioactive particles in my room. So I've got a count rate of 17 counts per minute is my background radiation. I'm going to see if I can trap some more background radiation, though. So what I'm going to do is... I've got a balloon here, and we know that if I start giving this a bit of a rub up, it's going to build up a static charge. I'm going to give it a good rub up, and I'm going to leave it in my room for a little while, and see if it can attract some of the dust in my room, and see if we can capture some more radioactive particles in that way. We'll check back on that in a minute. So, here I am. Let's have a little look at some of the sources that are exposing me to background radiation. Well, some background radiation we experience is present in our environment as a result of man-made events, such as um, nuclear power plants, use of nuclear weapons, okay? Those two probably account for less than 1% of our exposure, though. A man-made source which accounts for a lot more of our exposure, about 14%, is the use of medical procedures like x-rays and that sort of thing. Okay, so some of our um, exposure to background radiation is a result of things that we do, but a vast majority of the background radiation originates from natural sources. Okay, so firstly up here we've got cosmic rays. Now cosmic rays are charged particles that arrive here from space and they account for about 10% of our exposure. Um, the food and drink that we eat and we put into our bodies accounts for about 11.5% of our exposure to background radiation. The uh, radioactive material is in the food and the drink you put it in your body, you're exposing yourself to it. Okay. Um, the next source is the rocks, buildings and soil that surround us. Okay. The rocks contain radioactive material that's emitting radiation if you build a house out of it then you're therefore exposing yourself to radiation and that accounts for about 14 percent of our exposure um, the last natural source of background radiation which is the one that provides by far and away the most exposure for us is radon gas okay and that counts for about half or 50 percent of our exposure and radon gas is a product of the radioactive decay of uranium which is present in rocks such as granite and of course here in the southwest on Dartmoor and particularly in Cornwall there's a lot of granite and therefore there's a large amount of exposure to radon gas and people in Cornwall will even have houses with radon gas detectors inside of them so we can see here that there are a lot of different sources exposing us to background radiation but even with all these sources the amount of background radiation we experience is not that great so my balloon look has been sat here for just over an hour now okay so if you remember before we had a count rate of 17 counts per minute that was how many radioactive particles going in the end of my Geiger Muller tube every minute there okay so let's have a look now and see if the stuff we've collected on this balloon increases that count rate at all okay so I'm going to bring the balloon down 
So it's just directly over the top of my Geiger Miller tube. Okay, now I'm sorry that does obscure the counter, but you can see that's under here. I'm gonna reset that to zero now on there. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that down. That's still on zero, that's still on zero there. And we're gonna start our um, timer again, okay? And I'm gonna let go there. We're gonna leave that for a minute. We're gonna come back and see what our count rate is with our radioactive balloon after one minute. So we're coming up on our minute now, okay, we've had our balloon there, the Geiger counter's been counting up there, so let's see after a minute how we managed to get a higher count rate due to the, just the um, radioactive particles and the dust and stuff the balloon has picked up. So we're on 57, 58, 59 a minute, and if we quickly get that out of the way, we can see that our count rate now is up on 33, 34, so that's almost double, okay, well, it is double in fact, double what we had just our normal background count rate. We've managed to use the balloon there. The electrostatic charge on the balloon has picked up uh, more particles and dust, which may be um, emitting the radioactive particles there. We've got a higher count rate. Now, it's not a very scientific experiment, admittedly, and we can't certainly say that that change is significant, but, you know, it's quite a simple demonstration that the dust and stuff in the air is a source of background radiation. So that's everything we need to know about sources of background radiation and the fact we can detect it using a Geiger counter. Um, any problems with that at all, don't hesitate to tweet me at Mr underscore Pepper or email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for stopping by.